Hello everybody, um, here I am coming to you from the world of Pokey Poke, the game I've been developing for god knows how long now. Um, <laughs> I've uh, been recently working a bunch on this game, added a whole bunch of new stuff. Um, you might notice it looks a bit different even here at the beach than uh, it probably did the last time you saw it unless you've been following the streams. Um, I tried to try and like stream a little bit of development of this on Fridays uh, when I can. Um, and there's something a few people noticed in my last live stream that I thought might make another good uh, devlog slash mini tutorial, and it's making use of configs. So at the moment I'm developing this game and making, I've been working on a Steam demo, okay? It's a sort of demo slash early build um, that people are going to be able to get their hands on and play a small slice of the game, okay? Now there's a few things I want to do in that version of the game. I want to show a little intro to the player that um, this says, you know, this is just a little demo, um, this only has like a small slice of the game, it's all work in progress, here is like the account you can follow if you want to learn more about it, and so on. How do I put something in the game like that and make like a temporary uh, you know, when I'm going to dig that back out, you know, this is temporary content, you know, how, what's, what's a good way to manage that kind of thing? And the answer is configs. If I click this little um, targets button up here, you can see I've got three configs I can pick between here. Um, default I actually almost never use at the moment, so I don't know why it's on there. But I've got God Mode and Steam Demo. And if you know, if I tick God Mode and I run the game, um, you'll notice something happens. So, I mean, a lot of the ways, uh, if you if you read the documentation on configs, you'll see stuff talking about different platforms and like how you can set new different audio groups, different platforms. And um, if you're a PC game developer, you might just sort of just snooze on it and think like, oh, is this just something for you know, developing games for the platforms and porting or whatever? I don't care, right? But I'm here to tell you, configs are ace. So you'll notice I've spawned in this like room with like all these other like teleport things that I can use to basically teleport to important areas of the game that I want to test out. Um, I've also got all my debug commands active that I can you know, trigger to show different things. Um, and like teleport around the game, and, you know, I've got all these debug commands active. Um, whereas if I go to um, Steam Demo and run the game, you'll notice something different. Uh, we get this screen instead, where the character fades in, splits apart, we show the controls, and we get this coming up, okay? Uh, you can also ignore that text in the bottom right corner, that's temporary, as for oh, I was sharing this build with, uh, um, or, or a build without even any of this stuff in it, with some, um, the, a limited group of uh, a tester, uh, testers, and uh, that, that, that's all that's for. Um, so ignore that stuff in the bottom right. But anyway, this comes up, and... Uh, and it spawns us here, like where we would intend the game to start. If I press, you just have to believe that I'm pressing F5 and my various debug keys, nothing happens. Uh, all that's turned off, and this is like the... I mean, it's for the Steam demo, but this is the closest thing I have to a production um, mode, if you will, for the game, right? This is what the player is going to experience. And now, how on earth have I done that? Like, just toggling between these two things? I seem to be toggling between two different versions of the game. Well something I didn't know, and a lot of people don't know, and I couldn't actually even find in the documentation. Maybe it is there, I'm not sure. Um, but what you can do is you can have macros specific to certain configs. I don't know if you can do this with other things. Um, people can post in the comment if you know other things you can do with configs that are super cool. Um, but what you can do is you can have, if you write a macro like this, uh, you see I've got God Mode here, uh, Room Start. This will only um, compile if um, I'm using that particular config, okay? And the same goes for this. So I've got Room Start R Beach, which is a macro I use to determine what room we start in. And then that same macro again afterwards to overwrite this if we are in god mode, and we'll override it with our dev land, which is that little weird map you saw where I could teleport between things. And I've also got demo show intro, false and true, and, and, and so on, right? And and those are the, and you know, dev mode, you know, as well as another variable that I use to turn on those commands and so on and so forth. So between different configs, I can turn this on or off. 
Um, and that is super, super useful, right? For being able to do exactly what I did there. So I don't have to always be remembering when I'm making a build for the public to go in, turn off all my different debug commands, even if that only came down to like going into O game and being like a uh, debug false or whatever, which is what I've been using for a long time. But now you can see global.debug is just set to a dev mode, which is that macro. So now I literally just pick the target that I want to compile for that just has all those things on or all those things off um, and then just go build create executable and it's going to build it with that config all right um that that's it that i just wanted to point that out um it's a super super cool feature um that i didn't i had no idea that you could use configs in that way don't know if it is in the documentation then you know boo on me for not reading the manual uh, boo on everyone for not reading the manual because i don't know a lot of people who know about this a lot of people watching my stream kept asking like what are those um, words with the colon, you know, like in front of your macros about what, you know, what, what do they do? So here's what they do. Um, and it's really, really cool. All right. Hope this can help you out in your projects. If you're making your know, debug modes and things like that, um, you know, you need to separate that out from a release mode or, um, or, or even things like this, making a demo for a specific platform or, um, making some other like vertical slice or something of the game or some other like build that you want to do for a different platform device and then you know all that kind of thing right really really helpful very underused um really really cool oh the last thing i should point out is how you actually make a config uh to the bottom here in uh in configurations your your resource tree uh, soon to become asset browser i guess but i, I think they'll still be here um either way i'm sure it won't be too hard to find you can go in there and add a configuration and uh uh, give it a name. It has a parent configuration, so it'll like inherit stuff from that. I'm not sure how that in parenting works in terms of like inheriting things as well. I don't know if like God Mode had a child, if and I did other macros. I assume it would probably inherit the ones from its parent as well, but I haven't tested that. Anyway, yeah, that's why you make the, the configs, and then you just sort of you know define macros that you want to use um, with those configs. You set it. Uh, by just clicking targets up here to set which one you want to use when you run the game. And that's all there is to it. That's um, that's another way to use configs that a load of people do not know about and it's very, very cool. Thanks for watching. Hope that was a useful tip for you and I'll see you all next time. So thank you, of course, to all my patrons for you know helping me do the work that I do. It's obviously important to thank them um, for <laughs> enabling all this work that I do. Uh, I, I decided though, this was such a quick, like thrown together video. I didn't want to put like the whole patron credits thing at the end here and read off everybody's name for this particular video. It feels almost kind of disrespectful. Okay. <laughs> I literally just threw this together in a few seconds. Well, not in a few seconds. I obviously have to edit this together and stuff like that. I suppose it is a video, but it feels very quick, you know, slapped together. Let me just talk about a cool thing. sort of video, so I didn't want to do that there. But, um, uh, thank you to them all nonetheless. They are obviously responsible for me being able to make any of this stuff and make pokey poke and, and you know and, and do everything that I do. They are absolutely awesome people. And uh, uh, if you want to become one of them, you know patreon.com forward slash seanjs. Um, you can learn more about uh, the stuff I have on offer for people there. Um, pokey poke though, uh, if you're interested, um, as I said, I've been working on a Steam demo. Um, that will give you a small slice of the game that you can play, um, pretty much what you're seeing now, uh, coming quite soon. So keep an eye out for that. You can go to the Steam page for PokePoke and wishlist it now, and you'll probably get information about when the demo becomes available. Um, follow me on Twitter, follow PokePoke on Twitter, and you can see more information about it. Um, it's a cool little game about a girl with a spear, um, doing lots of cool bouncing and climbing and grabbing and looking for shiny gems. That's that's pretty much the whole idea, right? That's the whole idea of the game. Um, you complete trials and do cool things and there's cool ghosts that show you how to do other cool things and uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun, right? Um, yeah, just figured I'd uh, uh, plug, my, plug my game at the end there. <laughs> Since I don't know, I don't know if all of you have even uh, heard of this or, or, know, or know that I'm working on it but this is it uh, this is my game anyway thank you for watching thank you to all my patrons for everything they do and uh, I'll catch you all next time